I mean, this laceration is millimetres away from it. If he lacerated that, he wouldn't be here with us right now. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. Rox is a tiny dog and a python's bite can be so powerful. She really is displaying the classical signs of, of a snail bait poisoning and a tough moment for her because she's already feeling yeah. incredibly bad. This week's number five. Excuse me, Rob, I've just had an emergency come through. What's happened? Uh, this is nine week old Chico and it's uh, American Staffy. She has been elsewhere, extremely, pale. extremely lethargic. She is pale. Hot to touch. They didn't perform any x-rays, nothing's been done. Let's go. Let's okay, go. let's go. In Sydney, little Chico has been rushed in to Rob. The nine week old pup is extremely unwell. It feels hot and right. The pulse is not strong. And the abdomen, this upper quadrant, feels really weird. I'm bouncing off something in there. Okay, 39.6. It's up a bit. It feels hotter than that. It feels really hot. And look at this lymph node. There. The lymph system fights infection. The nodes are right through your body, scattered through to help fight any infection. If they're all up in an older dog, severely up, you worry about cancer. In a young puppy like this, first thing I'm thinking of is infection of some kind. You look a little bit sad, baby boy. This guy's just pretty flat. It's got a bit of a temperature. He's got it's inflamed lymph nodes, very pale gums. So we want to find out what's going on. Is it an infection or is it something inside him that's wrong, like a foreign body? Let's ultrasound pup straight away. This thing is just flat, staying there, perfectly still. Doesn't want to move too much. Obviously in a lot of pain. Uh, what's that? What is that? Is that foreign material inside there or not? This is liver. What is that? That is, just keeps coming up consistently in that spot. Because they said he hasn't eaten for a few days, so what is going on with this dog? Let's get some x-rays and see if that adds more to the story, eh? He hasn't eaten, so what's in the stomach? It's full of something. And there's lots of gas in the large bowel. What's going on with you, baby? Turn them around. Rob's hoping an x-ray will provide some fast answers about the little dog's worrying symptoms. It's confusing because I say he hasn't eaten for a few days, but Looks like there's something in that stomach. A lot of gas in the large bowel right through. Certainly something's going on. Let's get some blood from him, run that fast, and then decide about surgery. I'm still baffled with the x-rays. There's a lot of gas and fluid in the large bowel, and there seems to be all this stuff in the stomach and in small intestines. And again, this dog has not eaten, but it hasn't passed anything either. So is there something blocking it? I am not sure. No puppy normally would stay this quiet while it's having blood taken. Certainly not an American Staffordshire. Poor old Chico, he's very quiet. So we're going to rush the blood through, see if it shows anything terrible. And pending that final result, we'll um, go to surgery. Emergency surgery will be a last resort if the blood test results fail to provide any vital clues about Chico's mysterious illness. Doesn't make sense. White cells are normal with those big lymph nodes. Red cells, well, yeah, okay, expected a bit of it. We've got a lot of anemia there. Kidney counts up a little bit. Everything's up a little bit like calcium, phosphate, and glucose. All the other enzymes are normal, but it's not giving me a revelation of where the problem is. I think it's time to open him up. I don't want to lose him. Rob must now perform emergency surgery, fearing whatever is wrong with the nine-month-old pup's intestine could prove fatal. He hasn't gone to the toilet for a couple of days, hasn't eaten for a couple of days, nothing's going on that's correct about him. The problem is if I wait and he has an obstruction, he could die overnight. Now, I'm not into that. I think 
only real option is let's find out, let's open him up and just see what's going on inside. We may find something, we may not, that's the truth. But leaving him like this, too dangerous. The unusual thing with the bloods were, this dog's got big lymph nodes, sign of infection. So it could be a severe infection that's got hold of him very fast and his body hasn't even been able to react in 48 hours. If I'm wrong and he doesn't need a full surgery, I can just sew him up, he'll be okay. But if it is mechanical and I leave it, he could die overnight. It looks angry. Yeah, there's something in here, in this large bowel. Wet sponges, please. There's definitely something there. Jan is telling the truth, and this puppy hasn't eaten to the best of her knowledge. Let swallow something. Some pieces. Ooh, yow! Look at that. Wow. So whatever this is, we hope we can get it all out in one piece. It feels very long. Oh. Coming. Ooh, look at that. Just ripped a bit of towel off something. Eating the whole thing. Swallowed it whole. Typical American staffy, they want to play, they grab something, they rip it and they want to swallow it. Yep, he's done that. Somehow he's got a piece of material from somewhere and swallowed it. It could have balled up into one ball and blocked everything. It didn't do that. It had been completely blocked. Everything would have been over in 24 to 48 hours. Okay, let's save this intestine up and get out of here. Rob is hugely relieved he's been able to save little Chico's life. Before surgery, this puppy was, I think he was gonna die. You know, very quiet, pale gums, bloods weren't good, nothing was good. I think now he's got a they have a good chance of surviving them. I'm very happy with them. Okay. Ooh, yow! Ugh. Six weeks after Rob performed life-changing surgery on Pop Chico, removing a dangerously long piece of cloth from the pup's intestine, Ooh, look at that. the young dog has made a full recovery. And his dies now? Definitely food only. No more pieces of dangerous cloth are on the menu. Number four. Oh, God. What's happened? We tried to jump over a fence to get away from a dog. Oh, my God. Ah, that is a deep, deep wound. At the Bondi Referral Hospital hey, Sash, four-year-old Jaunty hey, is in serious trouble. Oh, goodness. Even emergency vet Lisa Chimes is shocked by the size of the wound. You can see the underlying muscles there. That's pretty nasty. That's his jugular vein just sticking up there. I mean, this laceration is millimetres away from it. If he lacerated that, he wouldn't be here with us right now. He bolted down the side of the house to run away from the dog. And either the dog's swiped him, which I don't think so, or he's got himself caught on the fence just jumping over. Oh, I just saw Martin carrying the cat in and blood everywhere. It was pretty scary. Looking through it, it's just black. I mean, it's penetrating right up under his shoulder. I'm surprised it hasn't actually punctured into his chest. He's breathing normally, and that's pretty lucky. Hey, baby, let's just give you this. We don't actually know how much he's bled, but the damage could have already been done. I really don't think their family's dog's to blame. This is too clean. It's not bruised enough. It does not look like a dog bite. My initial reaction was shock. I mean, I don't think I was as shocked as his owners were, but that's a pretty gaping wound. We've done some blood tests, and the good thing is that he hasn't actually lost too much blood, so it looked like a lot on the towels, but when we actually ran the blood test, it didn't appear to have affected his system too badly. You used up one of your lives there, puss. Infection's definitely an issue. I mean, that's an open wound. It's been on a dirty surface. Those bugs can get in there and really cause quite a bad infection. So we have to cover him with antibiotics. You are one of the luckiest cats ever. Go get your mum and dad, huh? It's already well past bedtime for Blake and Abby, but they've been allowed to stay up 
to say goodnight to their wounded mate. Can I say goodnight to I think Kirsten did the right thing by encouraging the kids to come out because otherwise they'd go home to bed with this vision of their cat just gushing blood. Thank you. It's okay. We'll look after him. Shanti's whole body just has to recover from the shock and we need to watch him really, really closely to make sure that he breathes normally right through the night because if he's got a slow leak in his chest and seems normal now and then we go and give him an anaesthetic, that could just make things ten times worse. It's all very scary, isn't it? Hey, buddy. Hey, let's have a look at this wound. It's bled quite a bit. Yeah. At Sash, Four-year-old Jonty is ready for surgery to repair a massive gash close to his jugular vein. Wow. Deep. That's extending right up under his shoulder. All right, let's just flush the bejesus out of it. Jonty injured himself trying to jump the fence to escape the family dog. That's nasty. He's really going to be prone to infection with this. First, Lisa inserts a drain to stop air building up under the shoulder and leaking into Jonty's chest. Looking in the wound, there's just a lot of space under the skin and remarkably he's missed some really major blood vessels and nerves, so he's pretty lucky. It's a bit more involved than expected. It's the last one. I don't know if the dog's going to want to chase you wearing this. It's OK, mate. Do you want to wake up? Let's wake him up. It's all right, buddy. We'll have a look at the wound in a few days' time, see how it's going, and, and we're really just going to take it step by step. You all right, buddy? It's OK, sweetie pie. Just got to wake up. Oh, you're a big boy. You're a big cat. You're a beautiful boy. I think we have to get the pink bandage off. One day after surgery, and Jonty's shocking wound is healing well. It's looking really good, Jonty. Hello. Come in here. I can let him out. Not only Jonty was in shock, but the whole family was in shock when they came in, so the reunion's going to be lovely. Jonty. How'd you come? Hello. Look who's here. Hello. It's a big boy. Yes. There you go. So did you find out how it happened? Yeah, we actually um, discovered when we got home there was a sheet of glass on the other oh. side of the fence, so I think he's fallen down and clipped the edge of the glass. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> At least it wasn't Maverick who did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's peace of mind knowing it wasn't the dog. I cannot believe that Jonty actually fell onto a shard of glass. I mean, he could have cut his throat. He is so lucky to be here with us today. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Jonty. This week's number three. So we just had a call to say there's a dog coming down, has been found strangled by a python. We don't know what kind of state it's in, so we, we just got to set up and prepare for the worst. Tell me a little bit about what happened. Oh, it's a, it was, and okay. because she can't run away because of her back legs. Yeah. Jenny is still in shock after rescuing her beloved little dog, but she's still able to explain that Roxy has very limited mobility in her hind legs due to a previous spinal condition hey, sweetie. and had no way to escape from the dangerous snake. We're going to take good care of her, OK? Yeah, OK, you pop out the front. I'm going to come and update you shortly, OK? OK. My concern with this patient is her external wounds are obvious, but there could be a lot worse going on on the inside. So I'm surprised she's breathing as well as she is. She only looks like she's about three kilos, do you reckon? Yeah. Give her half, yeah, cool, good idea. I've got a nice vein on this one. Okay, let's go. Okay, sweetheart, let's try again. Put tape there, handy somewhere? Yeah, I'll All right, let's see if we can get this in. Yeah. Alex is giving the terrified little dog some much needed pain relief as quickly as possible. When the painkillers start to take effect, Roxy is finally starting to be less agitated. Oh, sweetheart. I do you want to get an idea of how bad these wounds are? Before Alex can start investigating any possible internal injuries, 
she needs to treat the nasty bite wounds where the snake latched on to Roxy's neck. Just want to see how bad these bite wounds are. I cannot imagine how terrified she must have been. And she can't get away because she can't walk properly on her back legs. Roxy's a tiny dog and a python's bite can be so powerful. I just want to see there's a lot of blood coming from here and I... As Alex investigates the severe bite on Roxy's neck, she's suddenly alarmed that the snake may have inflicted a fatal wound on its helpless little victim. I'm not sure he's not actually lacerated the jugular. It was, it was horrible, you know. It was sort of like, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, what's happening? Amazingly, her breathing is actually pretty good. So she mustn't have got wrapped around her chest, but obviously bitten her around her neck. Although Roxy was badly bitten by the snake during the attack, her jugular wasn't lacerated as Alex first feared. She doesn't walk anyway on her back legs, so she must be permanently paralysed. And obviously the owner carries her around, so... X-rays will show if any of Roxy's internal organs have been crushed by the powerful snake. From here, Roxy's going to be transferred into intensive care and the overnight team will take some X-rays to make sure there's no other injuries like rib fractures. For now, the little dog will be closely monitored for any changes in her condition. Oh, you're such a brave girl. At the emergency hospital ICU, it's been almost 24 hours since Roxy was attacked in her backyard by a python. I'm surprised Roxy's coping as well as she is, but she is going to need pain relief and she's going to need antibiotics for some time. Hey, have you gone to see your mum? Roxy's traumatised owner Jenny is desperate to find out how her precious little dog is doing. Good girl. I'm really excited to reunite Roxy and Jenny. It's going to be such a special moment. I've got someone here to see you. Oh, my little bunny. You might pop her down on the floor, OK? Mm -hmm. You can pop down here. Oh, good girl. Oh. Good girl, is your mum? Hello, sweetie. Hello, little Roxy. Oh, you're a good little girl, aren't you? You've been in the wars. Oh, yes. <laughs> had a tough old time. Roxy is one very lucky little girl. If Jenny hadn't been there, I don't think she would have made it. So Edwin's calling me a hero. Oh, <laughs> you are a hero. I'm terrified of snakes. Well, that's, why, that's what makes it and so And when special. my daughter said, you know, grab something and just try and get the thing off her. And I just stuck that in. The broom handle went through. And I didn't know what I was doing, really, oh, you know. Just a mother trying to save a <laughs> little girl. And because of her legs... You know, she doesn't run, she no, can't, get, can't away. get away. Well, you know, she, she wobbles and, and falls and that, you know, so I'm always very careful. Took x-rays of, of Roxy mm -hmm. and what we were looking for, did she have any fractured ribs or anything like that, which is quite common that mm. it could have easily crushed her. So yes. the fact that she, um, she hasn't got any fractures and she oh, hasn't got any internal that. damage is, is pretty, it's, it's a miracle. I mean, she's remarkable how even with everything that's happened, she's really doing so well. And I mean, if she's eating and we can keep her comfortable, then, you know, we want to try mm. to get her home to you, so. I don't mind if you think to keep her. For a bit longer. For a bit yeah. longer, she's just been through to so keep much. an eye on her. Yeah. yeah, Because if anything happens, you know what to do. Yeah. Let's see if she'll eat some chicken. Let's just see, it's a little bit warm there. A little bit of chicken? Ooh, that looks like someone who's interested in chicken. She loves chicken. Does she? I was hoping she would. I can see she's interested, but she just doesn't quite feel like it yeah, yet. She's, probably she's just not quite ready. Just a bit weak and thinking. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes I feel a little bit sick and. With the, even with the drugs, she's, you know, the pain relief yeah. she's had, sometimes it can make them just feel a bit funny in their tummy. And 
think she's tired. She's ready to go back up. And we'll get her back on her pain relief and everything like that. So, yeah. okay. Bye, sweetie. Bye. So see you tomorrow, Mum. All right, we'll see you so tomorrow, much. okay? Yes. Okay. Come on, sweetheart, let's get you back to bed, darling. Roxy's going to spend another night in the ICU and hopefully by tomorrow her condition will have improved. Hey, I saw your bed out. Hey, are you okay, sweetheart? On the Gold Coast, Alex can't believe how well little Roxy is recovering. No in there. Nobody likes to be in hospital, do they? Oh, darling. Hey, but I think you're doing very well. The ICU team tell me that Roxy is really kicking goals today. She's eating, she's bright and comfortable. I think she's ready to go home. Oh, you're such a brave girl. Such a brave girl. Hey? After astounding everyone with her miracle recovery, Roxy can now be returned to her very relieved owner, Jenny. Who I've got here. <gasps> oh, look at you. Popper in a bed. Oh, that looks nice and cosy in there. Look at that. Good girl. Roxy. Hello, sweetie pie. Mm. Mm. Oh, look at her. She's so excited to see you. <laughs> Is it good to see her again? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Hey. Look at you. You've missed her a bit? Oh. I couldn't sleep last night. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to be checking on her every five oh, minutes. Yes. Tonight. Just like having another baby again. You are a brave little girl, hey? Oh, definitely. Well, let's get her home, I think. Let's go. Good girl. I gotcha. All right, let's get you home. Tell you what. If I see that snake again and it gets one of my own, I'll know exactly what to do. <laughs> Thank you ever so, so much. Welcome. I I'm really so glad she's appreciate okay. everything that you got. You look do. after her, okay, and you look after yourself. Number two. I left this morning on my way to work at about 6.30 and got home tonight at about 7.30. And normally she's at the back door chomping at the bit to get, to get inside and um, found it a bit odd that she wasn't there. So I went around the back and I found her doing this. I couldn't believe you'd actually need that muzzle. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Zena's owner is out of town, but his flatmate Gareth has rushed in with the trembling Rotty. She really is displaying the classical signs of a, of a snail bait poisoning and you do have to have to act pretty quickly on these guys because they, as you can see, their system just goes into overload. Come on, girl. You just keep going there. You're being very good. If it gets too far, they can actually go into seizures. When that happens, it's very bad news. You've had some problems with neighbours, you suspect, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and generally when, um, when she's kept outside and she might bark a bit, and I think they're a bit pissed and they try a bit of... I'm assuming last time that she was poisoned. A phone hookup to the owner confirms the suspicion of poisoning. To me, it looks as though she's actually had something like a snail bait. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is give her an injection of, of something called atropine, which is going to hopefully reverse a lot of those effects. Yeah. That, that's all right with you? Yeah, yeah, all right, no worries, mate. This one's a pleasant injection. The, um, the next ones won't be so pleasant. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually make her vomit. I want to get that stuff out of her stomach so she stops absorbing it, but I'm just trying to prevent her going into a seizure right now. This is a, what looks quite bizarre, but essentially it's a tablet that we're going to inject. Once this kicks in, she'll want to vomit. Now, it should be enough. I'll get this off. This is going to be a really tough moment for her because she's already feeling yeah. incredibly bad. Here we go. Come on, girl. Yeah, it does stink, doesn't it? You're in charge of that. Oh, great. <laughs> Lucky you. Can you pass me that tape as well? Zena's vomit is green. Chris now realises she swallowed snail bait containing a deadly poison called metaldehyde. 
there's no antidote for that. It's a little bit funny that the guy who owns the dog is a cop and so is a housemate and so are all these guys here. Is so this dog being poisoned, the person that poisoned it doesn't know what he's messing with, does he? He's in trouble. The intravenous route just, just, he just doesn't seem to be responding to that and that's probably a result of the poisoning itself. Mm -hmm. What I'm actually going to do here looks a little bit strange, but it works. There's a great blood supply to the eye and that gets absorbed pretty quickly. Yep. It's a bit of an irritant though, mm -hmm. so she won't like this. Paul, Zena's owner, is now racing back to Bondi to be by her side. <laughs> Once you get to know her, she's the most beautiful, friendly, lovely natured dog. She's an absolute, she thinks she's human. She's a baby. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Hey mate. Hey mate. What I'm proposing is that we, we take her over to the emergency centre for the simple fact she's going to probably need to be anaesthetised and also monitored throughout the night. Um, and she also needs something called a, a, a gastric lavage. Zena needs her stomach pumped urgently to purge the toxin from her system. I'm assuming she's actually been given a fair sized bait there. At the moment it's, it's touch and go. The seriously ill Rottweiler now needs to be transferred to the clinic's emergency referral hospital, SASH. Yeah, we'll do that in here. She's, she's warm enough for that. It's all right. Zena is in a critical condition. Hey, you going? We've got Zena. Just to fill you in, Lisa. She came in about an hour and a half ago, yeah. and she was tremoring and, and basically in a fair bit of distress. Mm -hmm. So just putting both tubes in. We're trying to fill up the stomach with warm water and then basically empty it out. So trying to physically remove all of the toxin from her stomach. The thing I'm most mindful of at the moment is the potential for brain damage. Uh, we saw Zena's temperature shoot through the roof to above 40 degrees. Now, if it goes over 41 or, heaven forbid, 42, then there's a very real risk of brain damage. The gastric tube has been removed and now the vets can only wait and hope. What we're looking for over the next few hours is basically a reduction in the amount of tremoring she has. We want her whole nervous yeah. system to calm down. The devastated owner finally arrives. We just say that we can go do anything we can. Paul is a Sydney policeman, and he's certain this has been an act of pure malice. If they've got a beef with me, they've got a beef with something. But to, to kill a dog, to, to try to kill a dog, which they would have done if, if we weren't home. Makes me angry. I don't know why. I've got to be the lowest of lowest. So the next few hours pretty much decide Zena's future. If she can metabolise the toxin that's in her system, keep that temperature down, and begin to show some significant signs of improvement, then the future looks good. If not, if she continues to tremor, if she goes into seizure, then it's bad news. It's very bad news. How are you, Lisa? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. You You're must better. be happy. A lot better. A lot yeah, better come tonight. see her. Yeah. You'll be over the moon. At the emergency hospital, Zena has made it through the night. Oh yeah, look at you wearing your tail. That tail's going. Oh. So she'll still be quite groggy yeah, today and even probably into tomorrow. Just it's been a close call. Zena could have suffered severe brain damage, but remarkably, she's okay. And she looks so normal now. Yeah. And to see her lying there last night broke my heart. And, um, but to see her again today would complete turnaround. I can't describe it, ecstatic, relieved. <laughs> Don't feel camera shy now. You always want to be Stage the centre of attention. <laughs> Back at home, Zena is showing no signs of her snail bait ordeal. I'm ecstatic that she's here now. And it uh, looks like we'll be moving out soon. Um, I just can't take the risk that something like this is going to happen again. But I'm happy that, I'm so happy that she's here now. <laughs> 
and this week's number one. Downstairs, one of Scott's other vets, recent graduate Phoebe, needs his help with an emergency case. This is Chester. Yeah, hello, mate. He's just sedated at the moment. He's just sleeping. The owner brought him in because he's been vomiting and had really bad diarrhea for about a week now. OK. Um, so we did some blood tests and it's all pretty normal. And then we did some x-rays and, well, do you want to have a look at the x-rays? Yeah. Oh, wow. The 11-month-old Cocker Spaniel has something suspicious lodged in its abdomen. What do you think it is? Do you think it's like a staple? Or... Yeah, it's definitely a bit of wire, isn't it? Yeah. Very weird, but it shouldn't be where it is, which is right in the middle of this dog's intestines. Yeah. Certainly the reason why little Chester would have been vomiting so violently for so long. Let's yeah. just have a look and see how long it is. It's about nearly one and a half centimetres. So, so be about... Yeah, size. that could be a staple, I guess, then. Mm. The reason that wire is so concerning is that it's got very sharp edges and it can get stuck at points. It can even perforate the gut. If it does so, the dog can get something like peritonitis, which can actually be life-threatening. And the fact that the bloods are okay means that hopefully it hasn't yet perforated, but there's no doubt that that needs to come out and needs to come out straight away. The procedure that we need to perform with Chester is called an exploratory laparotomy where we go inside his abdomen, we have a good look, we try and locate where this piece of wire is and take it out. Yeah. So let's just give him his GA. You're a good boy. Upstairs, Chester's nervous owners are waiting for any news. I've been really worried about Chester today. It's been really upsetting and really worrying, um, you know, wondering what, what was going to happen to him today. Okay, Jess, I'm going to start cutting now. Cool. All right. It's quite common for dogs to swallow silly things. They don't tend to be too discerning when it comes to going to the park. And Chester is an absolute shocker. He's been in for diarrhea numerous times because of silly things that he's eaten in the park. But this time, he's bitten off more than he can chew. He's bitten off wire. So now we have to go through the many feet of intestine and see if we can find it. I think it's quite low down. Mm from the x-ray, so we'll start at the bottom and work our way upwards. Okay. So that's the lymph node. There's the cecum. Mm -hmm. Basically what we're doing right now is feeling all the intestines, and because the intestines loop backwards and forwards around the abdominal cavity, we're not 100% sure where this piece of metal is lurking, so Basically, we're being systematic about it. Phoebe's starting at the top end, I'm starting at the bottom, and we're meeting at the middle to try and find this bit of metal. But after half an hour of searching... Can't feel anything. Can... <laughs> no luck. The small piece of metal can't be found. What's amazing is I can't actually even feel it. I've never had a farm body be so difficult to find. <laughs> Be honest with me, please. X-rays. Come on. In between those clamps on the right, that's what we want. To narrow down our search for this little bit of wire, we use the X-ray machine and also some clamps to try and find exactly in what part of the intestine this little bit of wire is lurking in. There it is. Oh, wonderful. All right, let's go get it. <laughs> OK, OK. We seem to have isolated the bit of wire within two clamps, so the amount of intestine we need to rummage through is only a few inches. You never had a farm body be so difficult to find. Normally, you just feel something in the intestine in size, pull it out. But this one, literally, we've taken about an hour just locating where it is. And now, once it works out the exact piece of gut that it's in, now I'm just rummaging around and hoping to find it. So far, no Thanks. luck. So I just don't know what we're gonna find. How can it be so obvious there and so invisible here? I don't know. Oh, what's that? There it is. Oh. There we go. 
Honestly, you're making me feel like I was going insane. <laughs> it's, it looks like a staple. But that's absolutely the cause of Chester's issues because you can think, swallow that and then have that sharp thing passing all the way down your intestines. <laughs> oh, thank God, I'm so relieved. <laughs> I honestly am just so relieved. Oh, okay, goodness. let's flush him out and sleep. Flush him out, sit, yeah, and then go and have a drink. Yeah? <laughs> Stiff drink. Yeah. So hopefully Chester will be much happier now. Mm. That, that staple is out. <laughs> this dog will literally eat anything. There we go, all finished. Yeah. Is it a worry that I've used staples for this dog? <laughs> no eating them. <laughs> That would be really bad. <laughs> All right, let's wake this boy up, shall we? Yeah. It's been a very traumatic day for everyone involved. Gemma and Michael, of course, have been understandably worried, so I can't wait to get them downstairs, show them little Chester, and reassure them that he's going to be just fine. Hiya, how are you Hi. doing? Hi. Do you want to come down and see yeah, your boy? Thank you. Thank you. Down. It's quite a long surgery. Mm. I wasn't expecting him to have to have an operation, um, so it was it was a shock and, and very upsetting. So we're looking forward to being able to take him home. All right, guys, come and see your boy. Oh God! Oh, oh no. Chester! Oh my What's God! That's your little man. My, he's like, what have you done to me? It's a little bit like what he's done to himself. Yeah, actually. exactly. Well, this time around, he's decides to eat a staple. Oh, my God. It's out of your office. That's out of my office. <laughs> he's got a bed underneath my, underneath my desk where he sleeps. Right. So that's, that's his comfort when, he's, uh, when, when I'm working from home. It really was a close call for Chester. He really has dodged a bullet or a staple. Although he's still very floppy and very sleepy, he is alive and I'm sure that he is going to recover beautifully overnight and be sent home with a clean bill of health tomorrow. I'll look after your boy. Have Thank a you. lovely Thank night's you sleep. Thank you very much. And uh, Thank you. sort out your office, would you mind? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Hello, mate. Ah, oh, look. Much more back to your normal self, aren't you? There he is. Just give a little groom before you go home. Hey, come on then. Cocker Spaniel Chester has recovered from his big surgery to remove a staple from his intestine. And now he's almost ready to go home. Hey, let's go see Auntie Reagan, shall we? There she is. Hi. <laughs> oh, Chester. Hello. The most beautiful eyelashes I think I've ever seen. I know. Let's just check you over real quickly, champ. Hey. Yes, yeah, so this colour's so much better. I've got nice moist gums again. That's good. Let's have a little look at your tummy. Hmm? Let's just put your dressing on. Good boy. All right, so we'll give you a little, little brush. Yeah. After some pampering from Nurse Reagan. But his mum and dad can't wait to get him home. Yeah, absolutely. Chester has the all clear to go home with his owner, Michael, who has been waiting upstairs. Hey, is that now? I want to be groomed a bit more. <laughs> Come it's on, quite mate. chilled out here. Yeah, let's pop his lead on. Here to go upstairs. Here we yeah. go. Look, and your own butler service. <laughs> Here we go. See you, Chester. Say bye. <laughs> Say bye, Reagan. He's up here for you. Hey, who's that? He's in there. Who's that? Chester. Say bye. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, if he decides that he's going to eat normal things in future, then we won't have this happen again. Yes. Fingers crossed, eh? Fingers crossed. Hmm? Chester was really lucky this time, and although it was a very close call, he's pulled through just fine. And hopefully, when he comes back, it'll just be for a cuddle, but I will have to hide the stationery. Brilliant. One last question for you, though. Do you want to keep it? No. No? <laughs> no. Do not want to make it to Julia or anything? I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll let you make that decision. <laughs> no worries. All right, then, my boy. You've been such a good little patient. Yes, you have. You're a good boy. Anyway, right. well, th thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Lovely, thank you. All right, see Chester. you soon. Come here, Chester. Bye, mate. Ooh, speedy exit to the door. <laughs> see you, buddy. No more staples for you. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.